let's move forward. Uh, the next uh, on the on the list is a city of Yetteborg, actually uh, the Yetteborg Energy, which is uh, uh, the municipal utility. It's uh, a more, I would say, complex uh, agenda that uh, our uh, next speakers have on the agenda regarding the electromobility uh, than just uh, the, the municipalities. Uh, we have. Uh, on the line, I hope at least, uh, Maria Jakobsen and Per Hager. Uh, are you with us? Hello, yeah, hello everybody. Hello, great to, it's great to see you. Uh, please tell us, uh, what do you do in, in Jetseborg and uh, what kind of use cases uh, you build up around uh, the simple e-mobility? Yeah, we... Uh, we hope we can give you inspiration with this uh, this presentation here around what we are doing in the e-mobility at the moment and what we are focusing at the moment of. So let's I, start. Let's start. Yes. Okay. So uh, my name is Maria Jakobsson and I am the product owner for the charging infrastructure. And this is my colleague Per Tage. Yeah. And I'm a business developer here. So let's kick it. Yes. Well, again, thank you for allowing us to give you a presentation about our beautiful city and our company. As you can see here, the city of Gothenburg is a port city, which uh, is also, uh, we have the largest uh, industrial harbor in the Scandinavian. Uh, we are also located in the west coast of Sweden, uh, around 330 kilometers southwest of the previous speaker from Oslo. Uh, every day for sustainable Gothenburg, we have the same target that Oslo has. We want to be sustainable for the future generations. And this is a, light, a lightning star, for, a, a beacon for us to, to follow as, as a municipal company. We are owned by the city of, uh, of the city 100%. Uh, we all, also, uh, uh, when we seeing this, we as an energy company needs to provide the city 24/7 all year long with re renewable energy, and that is our target here. So please take the next picture. I, you know, everybody knows that. Europe has high targets for uh, for climate goals uh, uh, to to reduce the climate impact for, for from fossil combustions, and Sweden has even higher. But it, we think that it's actually the cities that is the front runner when it comes to take the lead in the environment transition, and Gothenburg has a, a couple of governing documents that is is uh, is making it happen. It's the environmental climate program, it's the energy plan and the electrification plan. And all our presentation here is a, a thing that we want to show you that we are going from paper to action in, uh, in the electrification uh, part of our system. So please, Marie, can you just give a short presentation about the company? Of course. As uh, Per told you, uh, we at Gothenburg Energy holds our, ourselves uh, under the high, high standards and we're trying to be an inspiration uh, since uh, our goals are stricter than uh, uh, the European and the Swedish goals in Gothenburg. We have a vision to have a sustainable Gothenburg in a sustainable world. We are a leading energy company that develops sustainable and competitive solutions together with our customer and partners. Our core values are responsibility, sustainability and development. We want to be a trusted force in the movement towards a greener city. We are a quite big company. We are actually the fourth biggest company in energy company in Sweden. We have uh, many employees and uh, many subsidiaries. Uh, we have a quite uh, complex uh, different areas that we are working uh, within. We have cooling, gas, 
heating, dark fiber, and also the power grid. And as you can see, we cover quite a distance in Gothenburg. We are trying to be the enabling uh, energy infrastructure, we're trying to enable the energy infrastructure in Gothenburg uh, to make sure we're a green city. Yes, and this uh, picture here is uh, uh, our operating uh, system. What we want to show you here, here is everything is connected. And you can see the green lines here, it's, uh, it's electrical grid and the black lines and the black dots are our pipe system that Ma uh, Marie was mentioned before. And what we are doing here is uh, we want to produce renewable energy to the, to the city. And we are doing that by using a lot of uh, different kind of plants uh, to produce this energy. And the plants are also, many of them is using waste uh, uh, productions, such as uh, forest industrial residuals, is waste heat from the refineries. It's, it's also taking uh, the cold water from the river to make uh, district cooling. And we take also waste from the, uh, from the uh, savage treatment plants to create biogas and electric power as well. So this system, this central system, we are trying now to combine it to, to the city's new uh, electrification of the transport system that we have, uh, have now with the, our charging network. And that is what we will focus on the rest of the presentation about how we go into more uh, de decentralization of the electrical grid as well from the electrical part of the system. So please, Marie, take the next picture. Yes, and here we want to give you uh, history and current work regarding the charging uh, of electrical vehicles. So uh, early we have been uh, interested and also uh, been working with uh, innovation. One of these uh, examples are the Electric City project. Uh, we had a fully electrical uh, bus that went from uh, uh, one campus to another campus of our univers uh, university in Gothenburg. I actually took this bus when I was a student. Um, we have been working uh, for, for quite a while uh, with public charging at Gothenburg Energy. We st uh, started at uh, 2011. Uh, and, you, and we were very early then, and not so many vehicles uh, were actually uh, in the city to be able to charge. But we, we wanted to make sure that if the people living here wanted to have electrical vehicles, they were, should be able to, to charge and feel safe in our city. We also have a lot of focus uh, at the current moment at innovation regarding technical solutions for public charging. Uh, we will talk more about this uh, in the presentation. Yes, and how do we go from paper to, to action here? The city has put up 15 different kind of projects that we, uh, we and our other municipal companies are involving in. And the, at, the, at the right side of this picture, we want to give you an example of where Gothenburg Energy has provided with uh, with sources to help the city to reach their goal. For instance, you have one of the latest uh, project is the Gothenburg Green City Zones, which means that the city is, is uh, building new neighborhoods and uh, with uh, new buildings and real estates. And they want the traffic system there to be uh, electrified which means that also the waste that is coming into these uh, areas will only be used by electrical vehicles. Uh, the food transportation will be also with electric vehicles together with buses, uh, with uh, private cars and so on. Uh, we have also uh, other uh, R&D projects around the uh, vehicle to grid and leisure boats. Uh, we have as I mentioned, uh, uh, Port City, which is very common that you have your own small boats and the small harbors uh, uh, will in the future have electrical boats. 
And uh, in Sweden, we usually only use them one hour uh, every year, and it's in the summer of, of July, which means that you have a lot of energy that you can use in the grid uh, the rest of the year. So that is an R&D project that we are working. But we are also doing to commercialize uh, uh, different kind of projects, and one is to commercialize the waste uh, transportation that we have in the city. And we are doing that by increasing our effort when it comes to uh, to build uh, our public fast charging network. So please, Marie, take the next picture. Why are we why are we as a company thinking fast charging is important? And to know that uh, answer, you need to see the whole system when it comes to charging and electrified transport uh, segments in a city. Uh, these uh, metrics want to show you uh, that there is quite complex, quite a lot of sub uh, segments under the charging and, and uh, as well in the transport uh, segment that you must understand that you can uh, go wrong in the technical. We are in the beginning of a technical phase and there is a lot of techniques here. But we think that if you look at the map that this way instead, then you can see that all uh, the charging segments and the transport segments are connected. And we think that on the go charging and doing it publicly is the best way from, from a, a city standpoint to to help the city to, yeah. to uh, make the transitions over to electric vehicles. Because you need to uh, put in, uh, sometimes you need to use your vehicle and, and not be able to charge at home or at work. And the fast charging network is, is that way of helping also the commercial heavy vehicles to be more uh, electrified. Please, Marie, take the next step. Yes. So, where do we put these uh, fast chargers? So, uh, we, of course, we plan it uh, as carefully as we can. And we have a, a tight cooperation with the city planning office and our, also uh, the parking company. Uh, so, uh, we go through many factors when we choose uh, a place for a new site. We look at the where the people with uh, electrical cars are living uh, now and also in the future. Where are the apartments? Where is the business area? We analyze the traffic flow. We look at villa, ar villa areas. We look at uh, which areas uh, will change within the coming years. And also what are our, our competitors doing? So it's a, quite a complex uh, situation but we also have many P uh, smart people surrounding us so that we will have uh, fast chargers uh, where they will be mostly appreciated and used by the people of Gothenburg. Uh, one recent example of, uh, our, uh, of uh, building a new stations are uh, a station for combi combined charging for both light and heavy electric vehicles. So uh, at the end of the October, we built uh, four new stations for uh, heavy and light vehicles, and we have the capacity uh, to, uh, to charge with 350 kilowatts. Uh, uh, by the end of November, very soon, uh, we will build uh, four more uh, in Gothenburg. Uh, we hope that this will uh, make sure that uh, the companies uh, in Gothenburg uh, is ready to take the step to actually also run their heavy vehicles uh, on electric power. We uh, installed our first uh, charger, just one that time, 2019, to enable also uh, for heavy traffic. It, has, uh, what it is currently one of our most popular charging stations. Yes, and finally, we want to give you an example of a success story. Uh, the, uh, uh, we have done this this year together with our uh, partner and supplier, Unicorn System, and we are very pleased to have that cooperation with Unicorn. 
And what we have done is that we have involving the uh, uh, software as a solution uh, platform charge app to, to take care of spot prices so we can have variable prices to our customer. And we think that development that we have done is the future of pricing when it comes to public fast charging. Please. So what is the principle and the difference between static uh, compared to dynamic pricing? You see here three different line uh, 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 graphs here. And uh, it's seven days, uh, it's seven different days, and they have all the same, the bottom line in each of these uh, graphs are, are the cost uh, that you have when you're charging uh, from the Nordic spot prices. Mm -hmm. So you can see that the, there is difference between uh, one day to another. It's, it's the same, uh, when it comes to electric uh, power, the prices is also divided in each hour, which means that you have different price during the same day, and this can be well, quite different between them. And if you have a static charging price, which is in the left uh, chart here, you can see that your cost is uh, increasing, but you can't change your price. You're changing often the price afterward. We think when we have developed this, this is a thing that we would do in steps. So we have come to uh, the second part here, uh, the, the middle uh, chart here, which is daily variable charging prices. And then you can see that you, you we can change our price automatically based on uh, the middle, uh, uh, the middle uh, cost for the spot prices. This is the same principle that, that the, the petrol station has uh, for gas, uh, which they are changing the price based on the Brent oil. But you, as I mentioned here before, uh, the price within the days can be quite significant, which means that it, you can be even more competitive if you can change the prices in the night or in the evenings and lower your costs there because your base cost and the fixed cost that you have for the grid, for the personals that is the employees that is working is based on the on the usage of uh, charging between 6, 6 p.m. to 1800 every day. So you can reduce your cost based on what your own costs are if you have more variable prices within the 24 hours. So we will introduce the third uh, chart here in December in Gothenburg. Uh, you can take the next mm -hmm. picture here. And what is the benefit of dynamic pricing and why we think that is the future of pricing when it comes to fast charging at least, is that you know the tomorrow's price already today. You can spend uh, 36 hours before knowing what the price is tomorrow which is quite good for an end customer. You can, if you have a new electric vehicle, which has around 70 kilowatt hour, you can decide by yourself today, what, do I want to charge today or do I wait, want to wait to charge tomorrow or tomorrow at the evening, because that is the best price for me. Uh, with, uh, so you have actually the same parameter that you are involved with when you have your electric consumption at home, at least in Sweden, there is the same principle. And you can also knowing that if I'm charging, uh, uh, when the price is low in Gothenburg Energy charger, you know that you're helping to produce more wind and hydro and solar power in the system mm -hmm. because we have a, a demand and a, um, what do you call it, a demand and, um, uh, sorry, a, a supply and a demand system when it comes to pricing here. Uh, for an operator point of view, it's, it's you taking away the price risk and it's also very easy to, to communicate and you have no administration. Mm -hmm. So that is the basic thing with uh, the dynamic pricing. Yes. And that's for all from I got some energy. We hope we have uh, uh, made it a little bit easier to, to 
because we were the last one before a break. It, it's always a little bit tricky when you you are the last presentation there. Thank uh, you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure having you here. Uh, still, uh, well, we are a little bit uh, behind the schedule, but you made it uh, very well. Uh, there are a couple of questions uh, to, to you, actually. Uh, quite a general uh, question, but I think uh, it's worth answering. How does the Gothenburg energy uh, balance energy production and consumption, especially during the winter months and wind-free day? Should be windy days, probably. <laughs> uh, the consumption? Well, sorry, can you take that again? Uh, how does the Gothenburg Energy balance the production and consumption, especially in winter and in windy days? Uh, it's um, our pro the production of the electric grid is. is Central system, which uh, which handles by our uh, our uh, uh, authorities uh, for the for the whole grid, so that is uh, it's it's uh, it's n it's not a local thing that that we need to do, but but uh, for the cost point of view, you need to have balance with your where your supplies and demands for to that system, which means that you. Can can lose money if you don't have balance on your own consumption compared to your own production. But for the grid per, uh, point of view, uh, the central system is helping to 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 make that uh, that system uh, operating well uh, in that regard. Uh, and uh, so the central system, for instance, is uh, having a flex resource if the balance is not OK which you can also, as a company, own, own money in, in, in that regard. Yeah, thank you for the explanation. There is also a question, uh, I will interpret it a little bit differently, but uh, do you have a plans to, uh, uh, let's say, use the AC chargers for the uh, stability of the grid slash flexibility services in the future? So we work closely together with the parking company that uh, right now at the moment they uh, are responsible for the AC charging. Uh, we're currently discussing uh, this topic with them and I think uh, uh, since Gothenburg has uh, these high standards and uh, wants to contribute, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that uh, soon also the AC chargers will uh, take part of the flex market and make sure to uh, have a more stable electrical system in Gothenburg. Yeah, and we also are involving in demo projects when it comes to vehicle to grid uh, uh, together with uh, both Polestar in a couple of our projects and Volvo cars as well. So, but from that part of view to say that, that they will be commercialized is quite a couple of years from now, I, I think. Yeah, I think uh that's a quite a complex topic, so I would agree with you. But I think I think it's worth piloting this stuff because uh, otherwise we will not move there. Maybe last question. Uh, I think the answer could be pretty simple. I know that Sweden. I know that from the other energy business that we done with Svenska Kraftnet, for example, uh, that Swedish companies are actually quite strict about uh, about the security policies. Um, there is a question. I think it was more general, but. Uh, I'd like to take the advantage asking you actually. Uh, do you have any policies regarding the uh, Chinese products uh, that uh, are installed, whether they are installed uh, to field? I mean, the chargers or the other technology that uh, uh, are they banned actually uh, from uh, from your operations? Is there something like this in in uh, in operation? Um. I think it's a quite new uh, topic at the mm. moment, and the security part is, is something that that the the company is always discussing how it will handling both the which kind of of uh, hardware do we, we have in the system at the moment, and what kind of supply we want to have in the future, uh, especially when it comes to the Chinese companies. But uh, we have at the moment, you can't say that we have a. a, a 
um, stated a policy yet, but of course it's a discussion in the company. Uh, I think that is is key to the uh, the the war that is uh, is uh, between Ukraine and, and and Russia and and what can happen if if we we put everything uh, to to other countries when it comes to in, uh, infrastructure, which is very important for the whole society. Yeah, so I understand there is no written policy, but you take it into consideration. That's what I hear. I think this is probably uh, the yeah, important at the moment message. We don't have any written, but yep. we uh, we are talking about it uh, to 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 make over our how we will uh, handle this, and it will pro can be quite near from now that we have statements around it, but not at the moment. Yeah, the investigation is needed. Yeah, I think this is a fair fair answer. Uh, thank you very much, Mary. Thank you very much, Per. Uh, we need Thank to move you. forward in our program. Thank you very much for your presentation. It was really, really good.